welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace and I'm hanging out with Quinn and today we're gonna go big or go home. Isn't that the saying? Yeah, go big or go home. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at these light modifiers. And so this is an Ellen Chrome parabolic uh, octabox. It is 120 centimeters. It's giant and it's wonderful. And then just for comparison, we have this uh, deep umbrella over here. It's silver, it's 125 centimeters. And why would you use these gigantic light modifiers? Why would you do that? Well, the answer is you're going to get beautiful light and they're super easy to use. So why do you need more reason than that? You're gonna get something that your model is going to look at, your client's gonna look at, and they're gonna go, whoa. And your little secret is it's easy. It's really easy to work with these things. So what we're going to do is we're mostly gonna be shooting with the Octobox here, this parabolic 120 centimeter Octobox. It is, uh, well, I'm gonna go into some more detail about what makes it so special and how it works and all the stuff that's inside it that gives you spectacular light. And then for comparison, we're gonna be working with this umbrella over here because it's a similar size, it's 125 centimeters, so it's a little bit bigger actually, and it has similar light shaping qualities. And so without further ado, I cannot wait to do a photo shoot using these light modifiers, so let's get to it right now. Before we start our photo shoot, I first want to give you a closer look at this and why it is such a beautiful light shaping tool. And so this is a, an Ellen Chrome light motive, 120 centimeter parabolic octabox. So what does parabolic mean? Well, it's all about the shape of this. And so you can see on this side profile that this shape is really deep and long. And so what that is doing is it is focusing the light. So it gathers all the light. Instead of just scattering it everywhere, it pushes it all in the same direction. And that's really important. You get a lot more light output and it's more directional because of this parabolic shape of this uh, octobox here. So I'm gonna uh, put this around so that we're facing directly at our main camera here. And then I'll lock that off because there's some other things that I want to show you. Um, about this light shaping tool. Okay, so on the front here, we have a diffusion panel. And so what will happen is all of that uh, light that's coming straight out is gonna hit this and then it's gonna scatter and so that will be softer. And so what we can do is depending on if we have this diffusion panel on the front or not, it will change the quality of light. And so we can have softer light or more directional light based on this. And also, I have a full stop diffusion panel. You can do a half stop. And so the specular highlights are a little bit hotter. In other words, you have more shiny reflections. Um, so uh, I don't wanna get too much into that. So this is our normal full stop umbrella. So I'm gonna take this off and we can look inside of this. Okay, now inside of this, what we have are a few things. Number one, we have this second diffusion panel with a, sort of a double in the side. So let me turn on the modeling light really quickly here. So when I do that, this modeling light shows up and you can see that this disc right here is essentially blocking the, the uh, light that's coming from the flash. So we're not gonna get a really uh, crazy hot spot on our model or our subject, whatever it is. So we have double diffusion here. So I'm gonna turn off the modeling light really fast again. And then what we can also do is we can take this out. And when we do, you can sort of see inside here and the magic that's happening. So now what we can do is we can look inside of this. Now inside here, you can see a few things. So the texture of this fabric here, it's got these little beads and so it's not flat and what those beads do is it scatters the light so you get maximum light output it really makes sure we get a lot of light coming out of here you can also see that we have our flash head right in the center there and so that's why that second diffusion panel is there and so that keeps that from blinding so if i turn on the modeling light you'll see that it blinds us right off the bat so what we want to do is we want to keep that from happening that's where that second diffusion panel is there's also a little um, disc here that we can put in that will just cover that without the second diffusion panel and so we have a bunch of options we can shoot with full diffusion both diffusion panels we can shoot with only one diffusion panel and use the silver to get a lot more uh, directional, a little bit harder light. We can take out both diffusion panels and we can shoot with a little uh, 
a reflector right on the front so it keeps this from having a hot spot or we can shoot just like it is right here. And so what we have is hard light, light that's very directional and hard but doesn't have a hot spot, softer light with a diffusion panel and really soft light with both diffusion panels. And so we have a lot of options. This isn't just one shape of light. It is several different qualities of light from really hard to really soft. But all of it, because this thing is so directional and it's big, it's very, very directional light. So we can see where the light is coming from, even though it's soft. It's not just a big blob of white light. It is very directional, beautiful light. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring Quinn back out and we're going to try each of these different uh, diffusions and different setups here and see exactly what we get. So let's do that right now. Now that we know all about our Light Motive Para 120, we're going to put it into practice first with all the diffusion panels in. Before we do that, let me quickly talk about what I'm doing over here with my camera. I have a 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 L lens. And if you're wondering why I'm using such a long lens, well, I just made a video about why you would use this lens in the studio. So check that out. I've included a link to that video in the description of this video. The other thing I'm doing is I have my, uh, my camera set to TTL mode. I'm not using my light meter and because we don't have to. So I also made a video about that. And so I just did that. You can see that by clicking on the link in the description of this video so you can learn all about the metering that we've done. So we dedicated a whole video just to that. Okay, so my camera is set to ISO 100. My shutter speed is 200. That's the sync speed of this camera. And I'm shooting at f8 because I want to make sure I get enough depth of field to have everything in focus in front of and behind Quinn and have some forgiveness if my focus is a little bit off or if Quinn moves around. So what we're going to do here is really quickly I'm going to do the metering stuff that I did in I think last, the last video I did. Um, so if you're not sure what I'm doing just check out that video. So the first thing we're going to do here, my meter is set to uh, TTL metering, my remote mode. I'm going to zoom in on Quinn's face. I'm going to take a shot. That looks wonderful. I will switch my camera and my remote to full manual mode. So all that's locked in. Again, watch the video if you really want to know what I'm doing there. Um, and now we're ready to shoot. So what I really want you to notice here is as we're shooting through all these different light modifiers, check out the light that's falling underneath Quinn's chin, look at her cheekbones, her eyes, the reflections of this light in her eyes, those catch lights. Try to look very closely at the quality of light and how that changes. Okay, so we're going to shoot a bunch of things. Oh, I'm tethered, by the way, into my computer so I can sort of look and see if my focus and all that stuff is right. Ah, oh, that's fantastic, Quinn. You look great. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do a, a close head shot. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love that. We're going to shoot from just fingertips right above your hair. There you go. Excellent. Just like that. Man, this is looking wonderful. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to shoot a bunch and I'll show you the results and then we'll move on to taking out that diffusion panel and see how that looks. We got some fantastic shots. Now it's time for us to take this big diffusion panel off. But the reason for that is for us to get a little bit harder, more directional light. And the best way to understand what's happening with this light modifier is to take two shots in the exact same position from the same distance, one with the modifier in, or one with the diffusion panel in, and one without. So we're going to start with the diffusion panel in just like we were shooting. So let me go over here. And so Looks straight at me. So Quinn is going to get a shot like that. Okay, now make sure you take a look at the shadows that are underneath Quinn's chin, how those are very, very soft, the catch lights in her eyes, um, all that stuff. So now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take this out. Wham! So now we're going to get more directional light. And it should be a little bit harder. So look right at me, same as before. We'll take a shot. And now we can take a look at this shot. When we look at these two photos side by side, 
Really the differences are A, the background, because the second shot is more directional. We get less light on the background, so that is darker. But if you look very, very closely, you'll see that the highlights on the hair, those are specular highlights, are different. And so in the first shot with the diffusion panel in, notice the reflections of the curls of her hair are a little softer, less contrasty than the second shot. And the shadow underneath her chin is just slightly harder. So the difference is very, very subtle, but that will help you understand the differences between the diffusion panel in and the diffusion panel out. One of the joys of shooting with giant reflectors like this is that you can do things that are unexpected. And so what I have done here is I have lowered this parabolic that's really, really low. It's just right above Quinn. And you've noticed that this is at a slight angle. So what's happening is the light that's hitting the front inside of this is going to reflect back into her face. And so we still are gonna get a little bit of catch lights in her eyes which if I had this level and right above her, her eyes would have no catch lights at all. And because it's so large and it's in front, notice I placed her at the back of this, we're still gonna get very directional light. But because this light is uh, facing mostly down, nothing's gonna fall on the background, which means it's gonna fall into really, really dark gray, almost black. We can dial it into black in post-production if we want. And it's just a really fun look. Now. In this video, I'm just trying to keep things simple. In all fairness, if I was doing this maybe at a later shoot, I think I'd probably add just a little bit of fill light underneath here, but I want to illustrate what you can do with this and what it's doing to the light, and so I'm not adding a fill light, so you can see exactly what this light modifier is doing. I think it's still really good. So my camera is really low. It's shooting underneath this. Quinn, we're gonna have fun. So Quinn, look right at me, right at the camera. Beautiful. And here we shoot, bam. Look at that result. It is so cool. And so with that contrast that we get from no diffusion, this angle of light and how we have it, we can play in this little pool of light. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this a little bit and I'll show you how it looks. I love what we're getting with this. And to be honest with you, I really wanna shoot a bunch more of Quinn with this setup, but we're gonna run out of time in this video. So we're gonna move on and I'm gonna take out this uh, inside diffusion panel. And then once that's out, I am gonna put this in to block the light from just blasting out. Um, and so what we're gonna do next, well, let me get this out and I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna use the inverse square law to shoot some very high key sort of catalog -y images, full length of Quinn. So what I've done is I've placed this inside here, so that's gonna keep us from having a really hot spot in the image. But because these silver uh, little dots and all this fabric here is gonna be so punchy, what I'm gonna do is I'll be able to just, well, let me show you. So Quinn, go on back. She's gonna be really close to that white wall. And so the light falling on her and the wall are gonna be pretty much the same. So that wall, that wall should be uh, really, really light white. So it won't be absolute white, but pretty darn close, which is great for catalog work. And then I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna rotate it around. So now it is facing her. And then what I'll do is I'll just raise it up enough so that my camera is shooting underneath it. So I need to get it up high enough I can shoot underneath it, but not so high that it's shooting over her head. I might need to adjust this down just a little bit, so we'll play with that stuff. So I'll get this again a little bit higher. So we're sort of up in the air like that. And I'm gonna shoot way back here so I can get a full length shot. Let me make sure this is facing her. And again, we're metering and everything pretty much the same way. So now what I'll do is I'm just gonna take my camera off the tripod so I can do this very easily. I'll take a full length shot, TTL metering, and we can look and see that we have this beautiful, really edgy sort of light. And so when we look at this a little bit closer, you can see that the shadows around her are pronounced at the bottom but not so much to the sides. It is very directional. 
So what that means is we could shoot this same thing with the diffusion in the middle or the diffusion on the outside, but with this, we're getting a really strong, harder light that's really punchy, and so I sort of like this. So Quinn, we're just gonna play with this. So let's do some catalog stuff. You can shoot right toward me and then turn a little bit. Let's see the side, beautiful, just like that. Excellent, I love it. Okay, look at these shots we're getting. They're really punchy, they're really beautiful, and because we know that we can add in diffusion, we can change how just this looks. This is an unbelievable light modifier. Now, what we're going to do is see what we can do with a similarly shaped light modifier. This is that deep umbrella we started with at the beginning of the video. And so we're gonna replicate sort of that setup where we did the catalog work. And then I have this diffusion panel that goes on the front of the umbrella and that will soften the light and so we're sort of going to work our way backwards we're going to try to duplicate that catalog uh, lighting setup add a diffusion panel see what that does to the shadows and then see what else we can do just to see if this holds up to our light motive light modifier i love this thing as well so now what we're going to do is i'm going to set this up to try to replicate exactly what we did we'll shoot and then we'll work our way out from there Okay, so I don't have a boom arm on this stand, so I'm gonna just sort of shoot underneath it. And I can already see just one big difference in this light. So when I take this shot, you can see this is casting a shadow to the left or the right, camera right of Quinn. And so that's not something we had before. It's probably because I don't have a boom arm. So I'm gonna to try to shoot directly underneath this to see what we get at just sort of mid-length. And we can see there, we still have that shadow to the right. So we're getting much more directional, harder light with this than we were with the big light motive. And so we're gonna shoot just a couple more. Um, in fact, Quinn, why don't you take a couple steps forward? I wanna move this very close. And then I'm just gonna try to see what a headshot will look like. Bam. And that looks pretty good. We're overexposed because my TTL metering needs to be reset. So I've done that. Let me just shoot that one more time. Look right at me, gorgeous, I love that. Again, that's directional. You can see it's coming from the side. And so this is a much more punchy directional light than what we were getting with the light motive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the diffusion panel on this and see how that looks. Now we have added this diffusion panel to the front of the umbrella. And if I put this to the side, you can see that this is similar to what we started with. So we've got this nice parabolic shape with a diffusion panel on the front. It doesn't have the baffle inside. And the other difference is the light is shooting in and reflecting out instead of coming from the back and going through. And so it'll be a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna raise this up, something like that. We'll just move this over and get it nice and close and then try to get a nice, beautiful headshot. So I'll go over here, grab my camera, and now we're gonna have Quinn look straight into the camera. I'm TTL metering just like before. I'll take that shot. This is beautiful, beautiful light. I'll move this a little bit more on axis and we can shoot these headshots all day long. They look gorgeous. I'll try to put this even more on axis. Let's do a mid-length shot. I'll try to shoot underneath that. Beautiful, just like that. Excellent. One more. Ah, I love these shots. I have the uh, softbox, I mean the umbrella, just in the corner of my shot, so I'll just erase that up just a hair. And then we'll shoot a couple more. Beautiful, Quinn, I love it. Play with that just a bit, excellent. Perfect, wow. So I think what we can see is this umbrella with the diffusion panel is very similar to the very first lighting setup we had, but the other ones without this diffusion, the light is punchier, but it's up to you. You can play with these, you can rent these, you can do whatever you need, and then once you decide what you love most, grab it and use it for all of your photo shoots. Oh, these images.
images are fantastic. I love, well, I love shooting with you. We got some fantastic images. It was really simple. And I think you can see that these are very similar, but for me, this is my favorite light shaping tool. It is, I mean, spectacular shots that we just got. Well, if you wanna see more of Quinn's work, I have included a link to her Instagram in the description of this video, so you can check that out. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. It's totally free. We've got tons of contributors. We post videos every single day and you don't want to miss anything. So make sure you turn on the bell so you get notifications. Thank you so much for joining us and I'll see you again next time.